Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. This week, we watched Catch Me If You Can, 2002 crime drama. Uh, is it technically a biopic? Um, uh, yeah, I think so. It's based I mean, on the book he it's wrote. It's based on the book he wrote, so like, about you know, himself. questionable. So maybe it is a no, biopic. A lot, a lot of it's true. He's come out and said that some of it's over-dramatized, but um, all like the key events happen. There's even some stuff in the movie that's missing. I mean, the dude's also a con man. So, can you really believe? Yeah, I trust I, him. There were some. I I feel like I saw some things that were like, yeah, that it's severely embellished in points. So like, you know, I trust. Take him. it. I guess it's a biopic, but take it with a grain of salt. You know, yeah, I I would agree with that. But there's also some things that happen where you're like, oh, like when he's a doctor and he's like, yeah, I completely like just got fucking sick seeing that shit. Like, he could have just been like, nah, I handled it completely fine. No one would have ever known I, was, I wasn't I was a doctor. To kick things off and get everybody in the right mood, uh, this week we're drinking, I think it's an original. I don't know. It's uh, Frank Taylor, which is one of the aliases that um, Frank Abengale uses. Ab- 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 Abagnale? Abagnale. Ab- Abagnale. 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 Not Abagnale. <laughs> Not Abignaly, Abignail. <laughs> and uh, kind of going for, so there's a scene when he's on the airplane. Uh, the stewardess comes up to him and is like, oh, would you like something to drink? And he's like, yeah, milk. <laughs> um, and then uh, kind of like the French roots of his mother. And uh, he ends up in France at the end. So it's um, kind of like a spin off a of white Russian. Um, it's equal parts, cognac, coffee liqueur, heavy cream. And uh, triple sec or dry curacao. It's pretty good. Um, I haven't tried it. I'm about to try it right now for the first time. Ooh, fresh sip. It's, for me, it's pretty close to a white Russian, um, but you do get hints of orange in there. Well, that's interesting. It, it's weird because like one sip, I'll be like, oh, it kind of tastes like a white Russian. And then like later in the drink, I was like, you know what it tastes like? It tastes like those those chocolate oranges that you get at like Christmas time that you have to like smash to oh, open yeah. and they break apart into the I slices. Love those. I love those things. You know, I, I got to hand it to you. I think this is pretty good. Um, yeah, it does taste, it tastes like a fruitier white Russian. That's what it tastes like. Because instead of vodka, of course, it's cognac or if your store is all sold out of cognac, uh, the cheapest brandy that's available <laughs> and then the <laughs> then the triple sec. Um, but this is, I like this. This is good. Look, if you're mixing it all together together, do you really need the most expensive thing? No, mm-mm, no, E and J does the trick. E and J's there for you at twelve dollars a fifth. <laughs> I do. It's they, so that cheap. Be it's so fucking cheap. <laughs> it's insane. I will say, I didn't try it by itself, but it smelled good. Like, it smells it's, really good for what it's it is. Okay. One thing I did right. not know when I was looking. So Cam had texted me. He was like, "Is brandy close to cognac?" I was like, "I think they're the same thing. Like cognac's just from the cognac region of France." I didn't know they're made from grapes. So it's like basically they make a white wine and then distill that white wine into cognac and then age it or huh. brandy and then age it a certain way. Brandy. Interesting. I like this better than white white wine. Yeah, I, do, I don't know. I think like, you just need to drink more white wine. Like maybe sit what? down and have two bottles instead of a glass. Ew. Or a whole bottle. Uh, why? why? <laughs> I figure that's it's how you develop a, a taste. Cognac. It's like when you're trying to eat poop. <laughs> You, you, you <laughs> well, actually acquire a tasty deep cut. I'm not getting wine. into this one again. <laughs> Check the show notes below. Make yourself a uh, Frank Taylor and use the Drizzly and Casker links and get yourself some. Uh, if you're feeling a little fancy, get yourself some E and J. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say why we're using cognac? Uh, yeah, because it's uh, from from France, that? from the cognac region of France. Mont, 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 something. Right, Mont. and he's and he Mont ends, Richard. Well, never mind. <laughs> Said it in the most <laughs> white way as possible. His mom's from France. Uh, I don't. Is it? No, I'm, I'm. Was that really the name of the town? Yeah, it was. It was like Mont, Mont Richard. For some reason, I thought they kept saying it with an, an another M instead of Richard. I thought it was like M- Machad. And I was like, that's a I th- I weird it was fucking name R. for a town. But now that you say it with an R, it, I mean, it would check out. It's hard to understand people with a thick French accent. It's even harder to understand Tom Hanks, 
with like this weird Boston Eastern American, yeah, yeah Boston accent <laughs> impersonating a French accent. God, when he's like, well, and then get, not only that, but let, you're let also me in the car. Let me in the car. Like, <laughs> let me in the car. The car. The car. Let me in the car. You got that? You're trying to understand what the hell Christopher Walken's saying? <laughs> I mean, come on, two rats. It's hot enough. <laughs> Fall in a bucket it is. Of, of cream. And they churned their way out. I, I met your mother in France. I don't... I I want to know, like, how you act, like, beside Christopher Walken with, like, his weird <laughs> infliction. Like, are you just, like... I don't know. I don't think it was that weird in this Waiting movie. for him to finish his lines, and then you can go? Not in this movie, but, like, in other things where he just does take the most extremely, like... <laughs> like Pulp Fiction? Your, your father. God. He, he, <laughs> your watch. watch. He had us up his ass. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you do with that? Just, like, wait it out. Wait till the director says cut, and then you're like, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll do it sooner next time. Or just, like... Midway hey, can you talk are, normally? Are you, are you done? Are you done yet? I don't. Was that was that supposed to be where I interject? I, I'm I'm lost. Uh, yes, Steve. Steve, I'm lost. It is um, with an R. It is Mont Richard. Oh, hmm. I, that makes sense. You can watch Catch Me If You Can on Netflix uh, as of recording. Uh, I don't know if it's going to leave soon. It's been on there for a while. I think that's where I watched it well, last year. Because we're going to spoil it. You already did. We, we, I mean, we already have. We, we've talked a bunch about how he was caught in France. So, like, you Big know, spoiler. Frank gets up. caught at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they're going to hate the first minute of the movie. Catch Me If You Can is a 2002 uh, crime drama biopic. Currently rated an 8.1 out of 10. It's directed by Steven Spielberg. Written by Jeff Nathanson. Adapted from the book from Frank Abagnale Jr. and Stan Redding called Catch Me If You Can, The Amazing True Story of the Youngest and Most Daring Con Man in the History of Fun and Profit. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hanks, Christopher Walken, Martin Sheen, Amy Adams, James Brolin, uh, Jennifer Gardner, Elizabeth Banks, Ellen Pompeo. Yeah, some of these people make an appearance for like, I don't know, five minutes? Yeah. Like Jennifer Garner like and Martin Sheen, Elizabeth Banks. It's just like the fucking biggest cameo, <laughs> like yeah, two thirds into the movie. It's like, oh hey, I'm her dad. Okay, <laughs> hi Martin Sheen. Man, those scenes were uncomfortable. <laughs> that stare with the teeth was uncomfortable. Oh my god, are those are those fake teeth? Yeah. <laughs> they look like it. They look like veneers or something. I thought I thought he kind of like saw through his bullshit. At, at that point when they're in the room together and he's like no you're yep. not no you're no lawyer doctor what what really are you and he's like gives his little speech and he's like and i just love your daughter and he's like i i know it too i'm a man just <laughs> i was like come on <laughs> a romantic yeah i was like okay come on what's so amazing to me about this movie is one to me it's amazing because not being here last week he's this is like the anti rudy like, you show Rudy to kids to, like, show them the power of believing in themselves and working really hard. In this movie, you're just like, I don't want kids to get the idea that they're just going to be able to coast <laughs> through life lying to everyone they meet. Okay. I just thought that was really such an interesting contrast. <laughs> Not just, like, it was just such yeah. an interesting thing, like, two weeks ago talking about, like, yeah, Rudy's, like, it's a movie that as you get older, you're like, eh, it's not that great. But you show to kids to be like, if you work hard, in this movie, I'm like... I would not want kids to watch this movie and take the lesson away that's just like, hey, you can lie, cheat, and steal, and in the end, you still get it pretty good. Yeah, he worked He worked very hard to lie, cheat, and steal. He did. Like, the whole freaking, like, thing during the movie where he's like, how did you pass the bar? Like, did you cheat? Like, how did you do it? And at the end, he's like, yeah, I just studied for two weeks and passed. You're just like, all of that effort just to, like, <laughs> yeah. just to keep up this con. Right. Well, I mean, even with the, I mean, the main thing was like the the whole check forging thing where he claims, you know, he basically figured out a bunch of ways to write fraudulent checks in order to not, or in order for the bank to not realize they're fraudulent until it's much too late. Yeah. Like where he would switch the like federal uh, reserve code. The routing number. Yeah. yeah. And like, oh, if he ships it across the country, 
then it, it, they don't get it for two weeks and they don't know that it's uh, fraudulent. I think the other thing that's amazing to me about this movie is the fact that it would never, no one could ever do this nowadays where right. all, everything you need to know about some about someone could be found in like 20 seconds in a Google search. Also, at this point in time, I feel like everything was just so like trusting now. Yeah. You just like, sure, there's like uh, innocent until proven guilty, but I feel like you go into like an interaction, especially about like finance and stuff like that, where it's like, I don't trust you. Well, not just that, but like, yeah, um, I went to Harvard Medical School and like, you know, um, did this and, you know, and I spent a year in Cal doing this doctor stuff and I'm a doctor, so hire me. And the guy's just like, all we have is like the the head of the night shift in pediatrics. So like if you just want to babysit nurses and interns, not once is he like, yeah, let me check your credibility <laughs> yeah. let me or check that anything. Reference. Like nothing about that. It's just like, well, hey, let's be honest. Let me look and see if you're actually a fucking doctor. <laughs> let's be honest. We all have jobs. We all went to college and got degrees. Has anybody ever asked to see your degree? That's true. I could have lied on... I mean, it's a little different maybe for doctors. I mean, I'd, I'd assume if you were a doctor, though, <laughs> they'd be like... I feel like I should have. I feel conned. <laughs> doctors might be a little different. Hey, do you, do you have that exam but you had to pass? Not? That registration you had to do? But what if they're not? I had to take a test to get into grad school. Nobody ever looked at it. Maybe I shouldn't broadcast that so loudly, but nobody <laughs> ever looked at it. <laughs> well, but I'm saying like... I'm saying like... You know, like a lawyer has to pass a bar. Like I'm sure, like if you if you're going in for a position to, as a lawyer, you have to be like, yeah, here's my like certificate for passing the bar. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you do. You probably just have to say I'm bar certified, and that's probably good Let's enough. Ask Shay. If, like, if we she, know did she a pass lawyer the bar? or a doctor, we should ask. We them. do know a lawyer and we, a doctor yes. actually. And Power couple. Yeah. <laughs> one phone call. We could kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> Let's dial them in right here. You can dial people on Teams. Oh my god, no. Oh, hi, Nate. <laughs> hi, uh, we're talking to Bill Simmons. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, wow! We, we've kind of just fucking started talking about the movie, but Catch Me If You Can is the story of, uh, I, think he's, he, I think he starts at like 16 or 17, something like that. It's like really yeah, he's young. A ju- he's very young. He's in 10th grade. Yeah, so he's 16, I think, right about there. Yeah, 15 or 16. He's 16 when his parents get divorced. So Frank Ab- <laughs> Abagnale is uh 16 and he runs away from home and basically picks up a life of uh forgery and uh becomes a a con man and he's chased by um oh what's his name hand ready carl hand 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 ready carl hanks carl hand ready uh an fbi agent and a fraud who uh is tasked with chasing him down and it's just a cat and mouse game catch me if you can you know right it's currently at number 195 years that pass in between you know the like some of the events it's interesting how it like keeps cutting from like timelines like yeah. current day to... yeah the non-linear i will say i i know it was kind of like a cheesy way to introduce it but i loved the to tell the truth intro oh yeah the game show yeah i thought that was really interesting to kind of like explain what's going on and then like be like okay let's introduce how this actually happened yeah they tell you the whole story right there um did, did you guys know that actually happened? Yeah. Frank Abagnale mm-hmm. Jr. was actually on that show. Yeah. Wow. Wild. To tell the truth. Crazy. And nobody knew it was him. I mean, the producer knew it was him, right? Well, but well, like, I, think these were af- <laughs> I think this was after he was arrested and yes, everything. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was in the 70s, so he would have probably been working with the FBI at that point. The other thing I wanted to bring up to you guys, how did you feel about the the music in the movie how you mean i'm just gonna say it of movies that i've seen where the person who did the the actual music to the movie i was i think this is my least favorite that they've done and that is john williams really oh i really enjoyed it oh okay i loved it i like it it was all right i'm just saying compared to like you know star wars I mean, yeah. Superman, okay, but it's not like a, it's not a huge like, franchise where you just got the best like, cinematic scores of all time. You, yeah, you don't not, have to like you know, drop not, a fucking banger for this like <laughs> one off movie, dude. Like, it's not John you, Williams' best work. Tell that to work. Phil Collins. I'll say that. I, but it's also really good. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> like as as like a standalone movie, best work. Like it's good. Like no, it was solid. 
it was solid. It's just I saw John Williams and I got really excited, and then there was no orchestral bangers. And I I don't know. There was there were no. I, orchestral I liked bangers. it because I I really like like that like jazzy type music. So I thought that was pretty good. But that kind of spy music. Yeah, I I like that kind of stuff like noir spy esque like jazz music. But yeah, I mean, of course, it's not like these huge franchises <laughs> where it's like you instantly hear the music and you're like, that's that. That's that. It's a solid score. I think he was nominated. <laughs> Ben's out here waiting really? for Duel of the Fates to come on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was nominated for Best Original Score. <laughs> Christopher Walken got Best Supporting Actor uh, nominee. And it currently sits at 195 on the top 250. Who hadn't seen this before? I had not. So just came just came wow, apparently okay. just me getting back to our roots <laughs> back to I, our roots i just watched this like a year or so ago so you wait okay so you've only you just saw this for the first time a year yeah. ago i see okay yeah so it's fairly fairly new to me i didn't have like much nostalgia or anything i don't know this one kind of slipped under the radar i think i think we had it at my house or something and i just never sat down to watch it there's a lot of movies like that i feel like Oh yeah, we own that movie. I always see it on streaming or whatever, and you you know you end up just watching something else or you watch something you go back to. It's like the people who love The Office, They're like I could start a new series or I could go back and watch The Office, and then they go do The Office for like the fucking twelfth time. More, <laughs> more. <laughs> more, more, more. One of my negatives for the movie is it's long as fuck. It's what. This not two hours long. and twenty minutes. I don't know. This one kind of felt like all two hours and twenty minutes to me. You think so? See, I mean, I, I think I think I didn't think so. Only because it was like broken up in multiple parts. Like, there's like a whole. There's like obviously hit the kid phase. It's kind of like by his different jobs, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's like there's the kid phase, then the pilot phase, then the doctor phase, and then the lawyer phase, <laughs> and then you know. the grungy weird uh, guy and then and then he goes to france i'll say i think the end feels a little bit long when you get to the to the part where he's working for the fbi that feels a bit oh yeah. that's when i look down at my watch part. and i'm like okay this has been about two hours yeah i do feel like that could have been like i don't know i feel like that could have been like just like an end credit thing like he started working for the fbi after that and blah 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 and I yeah. don't know that we needed to see that for like 30 the minutes. The other one is like the Jennifer was. Gardner scene. Like, I feel like you could have just cut that. That was like five minutes I did not need. No, that's very important to Frank. <laughs> very, that was very, very important to Frank that that be in there. Okay. He wants you to know he is not a virgin. All right. Well, very it's like. Plot. He wants you to know he conned his way into like, sex. Like, it's, it's funny he when. He did that already, like when he was the pilot, yeah. like right away. With. with that's whatever true. with Grey's Anatomy. Oh, Frank! No, 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 no! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Frank wants you to know that he sexually coerced many women. Okay. I think she coerced him in that scene. I was gonna say she actually solicited prostitution from him yeah. in that scene. That's like when true. he's gonna go cash the check, that... and she's like, "Well, I'll just give you four hundred dollars, and and you just give me the check." Um, that was kind of funny, but I'm like, do I need that scene in the movie? The no. irony. The irony that he already had a thousand dollar cashier's check. Yeah, he could have just been like, "I'm gonna go cash this check." He <laughs> grabs the most expensive one in case you need an extra four hundred dollars for tips. He's a big tipper. Forty uh. percent. <laughs> they always say tip your prostitutes forty percent. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. I do. I do agree with Zach that I think the only part that kind of drags in this one is near the end where he's working for the FBI. That part is kind of boring because, like, it's like the chase is over. You're just kind of watching him have, like, a 9-to-5 job for a little bit. The scene where And the... not liking it, which, like, welcome to the world, man. I don't know. <laughs> I got the point of it and, like, the emotional depth of it. But after he gets caught in France and then he escapes and then they catch him in his mom's house and I'm just like, I feel like you could have just caught him in France. And it would have been okay. Well, he's got an Oedipus complex, so we have to keep going back to that. Oh, my God. The, what? No, I don't think it's an Oedipus complex. I think in his mind, he he imagines his life and his family being what it was when he left. Yeah. Hence, he's constantly asking his dad, like, oh, have you seen mom? 
Like, dude, your mom's remarried, and I haven't seen her in years. But ha- have you seen mom? Well, I'm, I'm gonna get you and mom together. Also, the movie is remarkable in that it makes the cr- it makes the criminal not the least likable character in the whole movie. That award goes to his mother for sure. Oh. Well, it's so interesting. Like, I don't want to like spin it in a way that like makes it seem like that, but to me, it felt like kind of the reason he's like doing it. And he kind of says it to his dad multiple times where he's like, I'm trying to like get back what we had. And like, I'm going to give you this caddy and I'm going to give you the suit and you're going to go win mom back. And then it's like when his dad is like, yeah, he's married. She's married to the like the Rotary Club president now and all this. And he just kind of like shuts off on his dad. And he's like his dad isn't like his hero anymore almost at that point. And he's like, that's kind of I think that's when he goes and calls. um, What's his face too? um Carl. Carl, and he's yeah. kind of like, kinda, I'm done. He loses, his dad loses his cape. Yeah. He's not Superman anymore. He's not he's Barry just Allen. A guy. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I thought Ben would love that part of the movie when he's like, You're a big collector? I, you, you act like I didn't <laughs> love that part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he's a kid. He loves comics. <laughs> he loves comics. He's a kid. I also love the quote, though, where they meet in France and. Frank is just, like, so happy to see Carl. Mm-hmm. Carl! Oh, my God, Carl! It's Christmas! Do you want some of these beans? We talk on Christmas. Every time we talk, it's on Christmas. Do you want some? They make the best beans here. <laughs> He's just got a pot. He's just got a sauce pot full of beans. Like, where was the <laughs> stove? There was a stove in that facility? <laughs> yeah, is this a Christmas movie? It is, yeah, definitely. Oh, my God. Shut the is. fuck up. It is not There's a like Christmas movie. three Christmas movie. scenes. That's more and than Harry Christmas Potter. music. Uh, there is Christmas music in the movie. This one has no. This one has no Christmas themes except for family. Okay, but that, ba, 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 every ba. there's lots of movies that have the family theme. Yeah, Fast Nine. Hard disagree. There's a lot of family in Fast Nine. <laughs> Did someone just say family? The, the Adams family is a family, but it's not a ho- or it's not a Christmas movie. It's a Halloween movie. I could make the argument it's a Christmas movie. Is the Adams Family movie a sandwich? That's what I really want to know. No, it's a stew. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it a soup? The mom is just like, hands down, the worst character in the movie. She's like, God damn. Well, but it. she also likes. She still cares about him, though. I mean, of course, but I mean, in the movie, I just feel like. Oh, I'm sure I can take care of it. How much does he owe? Three million dollars. Yeah. Oh. oh. Never mind. He, just, he kids just have but to I mean, do a little know. fraud like to live, you know. He's you can definitely food. tell that this story was written by Jack himself, Frank, in like a multitude of ways. You know, like his dad did nothing <laughs> wrong. He did nothing wrong, really, like morally at least. <laughs> you okay, man? I don't know. Uh, I just like I just like the fact that he called him Jack. I don't know why. I don't even know where the fuck that came oh, from. Oh, Frank. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. Because we were talking about Jack Barnes. That's what it was. Oh, okay. My bad. Jack Frank, Barnes sorry. sounds Jack like Barnes. the president tell... of a Rotary Club. Not gonna lie. Like, <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> like that sounds like the most like realtor <laughs> name I've ever heard. <laughs> anyway, you can tell this. I do think you can tell this. Like, was heavily influenced by his own perspective on events. Like. That's why I hesitate to call it a biopic per se, because it is based on his own perception of what happened. Um, now, Cameron, and, follow-up question. Do you consider Bohemian Rhapsody a biopic? What? I mean, I don't know. I, I get... Because I mean, apparently, that one's the, heavily band, influenced apparently by the, the band, band apparently yeah. the band Queen had a lot of influence about what was actual reality and what was their reality. And they I mean, took yeah, a lot of drugs. True. We know that. That's, that's true. And that's I mean, I don't know. A I... Yeah, but if it's a biopic about Freddie Mercury, he didn't have any say in the movie. Well, but if but it's it about the whole about, band, but it wasn't about Freddie Mercury, it was about Queen. Eh, I don't know. He's the one on the cover. I think it is a biopic in the sense of like, you know, it's it's about somebody who existed and like a true to life story. I think where the line starts to yeah. blur is when it's an autobiography and and in this case yeah. the person is a criminal. Right. It's kind of like Wolf of Wall Street where it's like that's yeah. still sort of a like it's a biopic but like is the events and what we're watching on the screen 
true or is it super exaggerated right. from Jordan Belfort or Frank Abengale or is it just exaggerated because of the movie? Because you have to make it entertaining. I do think that one does a little bit better of a job of like, I don't know, not necessarily like not necessarily portraying him Jordan in the best light, you know, like especially near the end where everything kind of falls apart. Uh, but in this one, I feel like he just keeps like like he he never does anything like wrong. Like I said, morally, uh, and it kind of like skirts past all this stuff. Like he literally like left Little white collar crime. You know, he left like his fiance or whatever. And, like, I don't know, that's portrayed, like, just, like, whatever. Um, his dad did nothing I mean, wrong. Rudy Rudy did that. <laughs> and that's, that's inspirational. True. That's true. Um, his <laughs> mom Basically, is just, like, movie. the well, worst. But also... Like you said, she cares. Frank but didn't, like... like she he didn't, like, like leave yeah. his fiance. He was, like... He was running away and was, like, meet me here at this time. And then she was just kind of, like... Turned she him turned in. him in. Yeah. Whatever you do, she whatever flipped. you do, don't tell anyone. She, he shows up and it's like, there's cops. Not that like place. she's not in the wrong, yeah. be, or not that she's in the yeah, wrong. Yeah, but for he that. also did lie to her about yeah. his oh, exact yeah. identity. <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> like she's not wrong for turning him for in. Sure. But like, in the movie, it's portrayed like, oh, she betrayed me, basically. Well, I mean, she did betray him, but he okay, but justifiably also, so. He also was just a also she she was yeah. she never thought about like there's. Two giant suitcases above our bed. Oh, I'm never gonna check How did those. Yeah, get here? It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, Don't look at these. Apparently, these also some people have looked it up, and the dude was definitely in jail for much of when this movie actually took place. So, a lot of these events are probably highly fictionalized, and these are things that he wrote in the book that like happened. You know, so like he pretty clearly made up a lot of it. I think the timelines might be off, but it's it's documented he did all of his criming before he was 22 years old 16 to 21 is when he was doing some big some big criming some doctor and some lawyer and the see, pan am thing yeah, is real in the in the in the movie they make it seem like it was a, like a two or three year thing yeah so he would only been 19 so there's another like three years that would have accounted so maybe that's the thing is maybe they took out the jail parts because you know it doesn't really help the story and narrative that but it would make sense that maybe he was doing like he was caught as a minor and they're like okay you're gonna do like a year in juvie or something and then he got out and just kind of bolted to the next place yeah i think he was arrested earlier on like on his on this wikipedia page it says he was arrested in he was arrested in 1968 and then again in 1969 so he he had a lot of arrests before he was like in the movie he's never actually caught and arrested until the very end but in reality but was he caught like and he... arrested for those like by the federal government or was he caught and arrested for like other petty or shit uh looks like one was a stolen car i mean that's the thing 17. like if if he's caught stealing a car he does however long in juvie because he's not 18 the federal government he did two years at 17 oh wow uh and then he broke the terms of his parole and when it was returned so actually he he was in jail for three years and then he was released in 68 and disguised himself as a pilot he was arrested in 69 for forgery and theft after stealing checks uh he was convicted in 69 um sentenced to probation but then he fled to europe do you guys want to hear i i looked this up do you want to hear his prison escape in 1971 this was like the most wild story to me um yes. so he 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 gets he gets caught like they know it's it's frank abick now they arrest him they send him to jail but there's some sort of like paperwork that goes missing while he's entering so so something odd happens where this guy doesn't have to go to like a detention center frank just kind of walks into the jail walks into a cell so all the prison guards think that he's a prison inspector sent by the FBI. Off the bat, they what thought the he hell? was sent to inspect the prison. So he starts playing this card as he figures out what they think. He gets a hold of uh, a phone, calls one of his old girlfriends, Jean Sebring. She talk, er, he talks to her about getting an old FBI card that he, he got from one of the agents that was chasing him. She takes it to like a Kinko's, says... 
It's her dad. She wants to get new business cards made, but but forges the number on there to be a payphone in a mall nearby where she lives. She gets that done. New uh, uh new numbers printed on the business card. Okay. She then uh, calls the jail. Says she needs to talk to Frank. Frank convinces the guards that he's working for the FBI, and does so by um. By telling them, hey, here's this card, you need to call uh, the agent I'm working with. Guards call the agent, which is the number on the newly forged business card. Frank's girlfriend picks up at the mall on a payphone, convinces the guards that she is the FBI agent's secretary and that she needs to come and pick up Frank because they have to debrief on this mission that's too sensitive to be talked about over the phone. My she God. picks him up, People are so he gullible. walks right out of the jail. <laughs> Gets in her car, drives away. What the hell? Uh, the only thing more wild is he ends up in New York, I believe, maybe six months after. Walks by a couple of cops who are just buying hot dogs at a hot dog stand. One of them thinks he recognizes Frank and just yells, Hey, Frank! Frank Abagnale Jr. turns around and looks at him. The guys immediately arrest him. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god. Dude, just walks, the whole complicated scheme, walks out of a jail, and ends up being busted by, hey, Zach, how's it going? Oh, my God, you got me. (laughs) At that that point, that's all you can do. You're just like, good one. (laughs) It's it's like the shoulder tap from the other side. You got me. (laughs) You look over, and you're like, damn. All right. (laughs) It's like that. Damn it. I have to accept that I was just got. I mean, you know... In a sense, it's not that hard to believe because we still have people like calling people on the phone and being like, this is the FBI. You have to give us your credit card information right now or else it's like. Yeah, I got a call like that yesterday. I got a call like that was basically like, oh, we you need to stop working immediately and call and press one to talk to a federal agent. Otherwise, you'll be in serious trouble. I got that call too, right. and it was like, click. <laughs> it was supposed. It was like I don't remember what. It was some fucking state in the south, and it's like you're wanted in this state. <laughs> you can you can pay your you can pay your bail by pressing this number. And I was like, part of me just wants to see like if I play along. Yeah. What the fuck's going to happen? Sorry, guys, that was me. <laughs> but I couldn't. I, I wanted couldn't to press one so bad to talk to this quote federal agent and be like, all right, what's your deal? <laughs> I know this is fake, but I want you to tell me. What's up? Just give him the address of like a fucking police station and be like, show up at this address to arrest me. I'll be there. We're going to hit up some ads. We're going to come back and we're going to do some trivia. You, you know we love saving the turts. You know Cam hates fucking paper straws. Paper straws. Sock. Sock? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that paper straw technology has improved since I last shat on paper straw. I have used a couple since I've been able to go out more recently due oh, to yeah. being vaccinated. And That's what they were uh, doing the whole time while we were inside. They were just inventing better paper straws. I have seen also not paper straws, but it seems like they're compostable plastic straws or something. Like You're talking about the like ones that are made different. out of like agave or whatever? I have no idea what the composition of these straws are. I'm just... <laughs> but they are different. I'm than not a straw expert. But you're the expert, Dylan. But I do know a good glass straw when I see one, you know? Yes. I will say for those, for being at home and where you, you know, maybe you like straws in your fruity margaritas or you like straws to mix with your, you know, old fashions or whatever, you know, having these straws around the home is really nice. Not constantly like throwing things away or you don't have to keep buying straws all the time. Like you just buy a couple and then you're good. And if you want cocktail picks or muddlers, they have that too. It, there's many colors. He's getting into like designs. So like the pride flag, he puts it on like the side of the straw. He's got hearts. He's got critters. It's like you get a piece of art along with a straw. A little multi-use. Uh, oh, yeah. He has critter straws, which have, there's see a dolphin, a salamander. That salamander looks intricate. That is impressive. Grab some glass straws from Surfside Sips. Use promo code cocktails and classics spelled out for 20% off we get a little kickback from that 
and you get you get to save some money on some glass straws, and they should last you a long time. Dishwasher safe. They're pretty sturdy. Just don't uh, drop them on the floor like me, like a big idiot. And you have to buy more. <laughs> we watch the movies. Zach sometimes watches them a few times. Comes up with some trivia questions. I, I saw this one a few times. And he uh, freaking quizzes us. Sees what we know. Freaking. Sees what Ben Ben wrote us. down on his little on his little notepad. Ben's a little wiener. <laughs> he is. He's a big wiener. I don't write shit down while I watch the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it'd be fine if you did. I think we need to run back the tape. I think you've admitted to writing things down while you watch the movie. Once. Ben has reverted back to his, his college and high school ways where they're like, you're going to have a quiz on this movie, so pay attention. Osmosis Jones. Looks up the spark notes later. <laughs> oh, I was definitely that kid that was like, you're never going to pass if you don't read the book. <laughs> Bitch, Try watch me. me. Watch me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> watch me. Yeah, I did the Ace. same. I took a Harry Potter lit class, and I think I've only read one book still. Oh, but those are good. Yeah, but I've seen the movies. They're close enough. It would have... Uh... Basically, I get, like, from the movies and from online stuff. Like, I've seen the movies, so, like, basically, I would, like... Cameron's watched a bunch of Harry Potter porn. He knows exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> well, it'd be like, oh, you have to have supporting evidence. So I knew it would happen in the movie or on Cliff Notes or whatever. And then I would just go into the book and find the place where it happens. And then I'd quote it and be like, this is it. This is the quote from the book where this thing happened, even though, you know. I wonder if it, I didn't read it. like, is it easier today? Could you just listen to the audio book? Uh, now yeah. that there's so much more yep. accessible. I feel like when we were younger... It was like, it had to be on tape or CD. I guess. I think, but for me, though, I definitely absorb information better if I'm looking at it. Like, if I hear it sometimes, it just goes in one ear and out the other, and it's like, whatever. Yeah, I gotta be I definitely absorb it more if it's like, if I read it, or write it down. I'm the same. Like, I I have to be like, my my peak listening to discussions, like podcasts and stuff, is driving. Audiobooks is like driving stuff, because it's like, then I can just focus on that. And not have to worry Don't about have to worry about the and, road and, and not driving. <laughs> I mean, but driving is like so like second nature. Like at this Don't point in your like, life, who needs a Tesla when I just zone out anyways driving? <laughs> <laughs> well, I okay. All right. You, you ever just start driving <laughs> you know and then I mean. stop driving somewhere else, and you're like, how did I get here? <laughs> Question number one: The silver car that Frank Abagnale purchases. This is when he, uh, when he gets prostituted by Jennifer Gardner. Is a a Aston Martin DB5, b Aston Martin V8, or c Aston Martin V12? Oh man, I just know it's an Aston Martin. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I wrote it down three. I usually so, don't do that, but I did write you said it down a three V8 times. or twelve or the or the DB5. Yep. Uh, none of which are very eco-friendly, by the way. Really? What are Talking the odds like 8 to 10 miles a gallon. You know what? I feel like Frank would pull some bullshit that are like, yeah, it was James Bond's car. It was the DB5. But like, I don't know. Uh, but that feels like a trap then because it'd be like, oh, what's a famous Aston Martin that I can throw in here? The I one put, that's I not put like three the other in, two. So. <laughs> well, yes, but there, but two have very similar names and one does not have it. Yeah. One of these is not like the other, right? I see where you're going. I'm still gonna. I'm gonna say DB5. It's the car I recognize out of the lineup. I do recognize that that's also James Bond's like original car, but well, James Bond's Aston. Martin, well, I'm also gonna go I'm with gonna that then, because uh, if God, Cam wouldn't have said that, does it? Um, does it help I if I told you James choose. Bond drove all of these at one point in a movie? Oh shit! Okay. That does help me I mean, because sure, I know but I the like DB5 I knew five is like the original. I knew James Aston Bond drove Martin. Aston Martins, but I knew nothing yeah. about like what models. So I when you started to list like the them, eight and twelve were newer. When you started to list them, I was like, "Ooh, Aston Martin, that's gonna be my guess." Oh, there's another one. Oh, <laughs> I know that was another. me. I was like, "Um, oh, I'm so excited because I know be it's an Aston. Aston Martin." And then he said all three Aston Martins. And I'm like, "Fuck!" Well, if you um, if you know the James Bond movie that played in the background, that'll help out a bit. Oh, it won't. Because um, I know the movie and I don't know what the what car movie is. was it. <laughs> don't worry well, about it. it. Oh come on! I'm not gonna know. I'm just curious. 
I'll tell you after we get some guesses. I already in. answered anyway. I already um, said DB5. My answer is locked it might, in right now. It might go. help these guys. Well, I'll go with the. I was also going to say DB5. That was my first guess. I'll go different. Um, I'm going to say he's got some BDE, and I'm going to go with the 12. The V12? The V12. It was Goldfinger, because he oh. mentions Pussy Galore. I, yeah. I don't know if that's DB5. Maybe it is, though. It is. It's the okay. DB5. Right. Damn. Right. I feel like the V8 wouldn't have come out until after. I think he's. Dr- <laughs> I think the Aston Martin, maybe V8 or 12, I think were newer models. Like I feel like that was actually like Pierce Brosnan. Question number two. There's a scene when Frank is printing checks in a hotel room for Pan Am. He just finishes talking to a bank teller and says, I want to cash this check and take you out to a steak dinner. Immediately after that, there's a scene. He's laying across the bed, and there's all sorts of checks across the floor. How much money in checks did Frank have laid out in the floor? Is it A, $3,161.28? B, $13,161.28? Or C, $313,161.28? Thir- 13 or what was it 3000 or 13 sorry Both. there was 3 and then 13 yes. and then 300 3 then 13 then 313 3 seems like such a low number this is assuming that the that every check amount was for the same value that he showed to the bank teller oh okay like a payroll check cuz yep. they're payroll checks gotcha okay um Man. I'll say 13. I feel like if he had just a bunch of checks, yeah, I mean, I'm going to, well, yeah, but earlier in the movie, he said he was making some crazy amount for the time period as a, as the airline pilot to his dad. Yeah. He, he was going to buy a $60,000 house, a Cadillac. <laughs> and I'm just saying, he was like, oh yeah, I'm making like, I don't remember how much, but I remember thinking like, that's a lot. In I like, mean, by the time they went to his mom, it was like 1.3 million or something that he had counterfeited but i think three, i think right? part of the thing was that he kind of worked in small point. amounts so that's my thought well, process for the thirteen thousand. well right but pay i'm just saying for payroll checks like it's not gonna be three thousand dollars or 13 whatever three thousand dollars but but 13 also feels low if each payroll check is like a couple thousand dollars well then get your bde and go for three hundred thousand sir all right we're gonna go three hundred thousand lock it in I'm going to go with the 13 just because I feel like they said they could take payroll checks up to $300. So I feel like he wasn't going to push for a lot more than that. So I'm guessing he tried to keep each check under 300 so that way he could use them anywhere. And then no matter how many checks, if there were a ton of checks, it would be mm, still around point. 13. Because I'm assuming there were more than like 10 checks on the ground. All right, guys, I gotta be honest. I was really between this and how many airplanes were in the bathtub. <laughs> Wild, wildly different answers. There's not that many airplanes in the bathtub. Um, but there are 44 checks on the ground. Oh, no. Each written for $299.12. Dang, it's 13. Which gets you to 13161 yeah. and 28 Wow. Yeah, I counted up the airplanes a couple times, and it was like 18 airplanes. I would say, was it 44. just about 20? I was going to say t- about 20, so... Do you think he was able to get a logo from each wing? Uh, question number three. Um, how long does the animated intro at the beginning last? Is it two <laughs> minutes and one second? Two minutes and 31 seconds? Or three minutes and 31 seconds? You know, I wrote down um, that I really enjoyed that animated intro. I really liked that. It was, uh, I thought that was cool. clever. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go shortest amount of time, two minutes and a second. Any any reason you tend to hang around two minutes and one second, Cam? No. So this is a this is a pretty important question here because Ben's got two points and Cam and I both have one. Yeah. Not after this so, question. So we should have let Ben go first, <laughs> but <laughs> you should have. I don't. But care. you didn't. I'll wait for Ben. Congratulations, you played yourself. Um. I'm going to say, oh, my God. If Ben gets this, he sweeps the question asker. Good. I'm Who which is? means? <laughs> which means next week I'm at zero. Um, Makes you think I, I build these every week just to stump one of you. Whoever got <sighs> me last week, I just dick you over the next week. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is this is difficult. I'm going to say 331. Damn it. That's what I was going to say, but uh I'll go to 231 just to uh, you know, spread the answers. Well, it's a good thing you did because the answer is 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Yeah, and yeah I like that intro. Thanks, Ben. I'm not always a fan of when they put the credits at the beginning of the movie because I don't always care about all those names. I just want to get to the movie, you know? Sometimes I want them to put the credits at the end so I can skip it. At least make it something interesting. Like, if you're going to do all that. This one like, was I hate, interesting. Like, I, I hate, like, comedies. Skip where through it's, it. Yeah, I hate comedies where it's, like, a fucking minute and a half thing. And it's, like, all right, how many times? Not only do you have to do the little intro, like, animated thing for whoever the, the production company is. But then you have to but tell me also, again in the, the front credits. And then in the back credits. It's, like, I really. Yeah. I mean, like, cool. And we have to find Anne, new Anne Boleyn interesting or whatever your fucking company name is. Cool and but. new, interesting, fun animations to bring in each different part. Like, the producer, director, writer, actors. It's like, okay, can't we save some of this for the end? Alrighty, Sound so. Department, all of it. Tie breaking question. Closest without going over format. How many locations did the production crew use for the movie? Just in total, exteriors and interiors? Believe so. How many so. locations? Okay. It was either this or a Bible question. I think I might have taken the Bible question. <laughs> I don't know what the Bible question could have been, but... Uh, what What is the difference between Lutherans and... <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I'm just going to be... <laughs> I'm just going to throw out a nice round number and say like 50. 50?! Oh my god! Well, that's what's a lot, though. What's a lot? What's a little? What's average? I mean, fifty would be a lot. I mean, yeah, this is bullshit because Dylan would fucking know. Well, not really. I've never worked on anything of this size. Well, all I saw online was that like it took forever to get this movie made. I think it was something like, what was it, in the eighties or something? It, it yes. started. Spielberg first? Spielberg bought the rights almost as soon as the book came out in the eighties. In like the eighties, and yeah. then. It nothing happened until like the eighty seven. So then believe they, it or not, Tom Hanks was originally supposed to play Frank Abagnale Jr. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and by the time they got to making the movie, they just kind of had him play the hand ready. <laughs> but it was like um, it was like uh, until eighty seven, and then like Spielberg decided he was gonna direct it or something, or I, I don't remember. But they had like Fincher was gonna direct it at one point, somebody else, and then it took it took him like. I think it was April to May of two thousand one or two thousand two to do this movie. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I feel like for Zach to ask this question, it either has to be a lot or like a small amount. Um. So I'm gonna bite on the small amount, and I'm gonna say seven. Uh, Dylan at seven, and Ben said fifty. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. What if I told you neither of you were remotely close? Oh is it God. way over? It's 157. Whoa! Yeah. Holy it's shit. It's a lot. It's like every time you have a camera pointed at a street, it's a different fucking street. <laughs> well, wow. I, mean, I was that, but like, it, like, none of the houses looked remotely similar. Well, my thought was like, they shot on like, like Warner Brothers back lot or something. And then were just like, used every different kind of thing they had. And then like, yeah. All the interiors or, like, some of the house exteriors were all, like, built Sound on a stage. studio or something. Yeah. Yeah. Something but, else I, I wow. noticed. I couldn't, I couldn't find a way to put it into a question. Did you guys notice the roads in this movie? Every street is, like, soaking wet. Every single street. It shots shots or scenes where it's the middle of, like, a June day. And the street is soaked. Um, I mean... It looks better on camera, I guess. Oh, does it? I don't know. You it just looks a like lot if less, like draw like I'm the just trying to figure out the, why the why would they black try top that? looks cleaner. Oh, I guess. Well, well, that. But then, like at night, you know, you get like reflections and stuff in it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you would. Interesting. Yeah, it's like every scene except for the runways. All like the ground is soaked. Weird. Yeah. Uh, ben gets the win, oh. though. Well, Ben, I hate you. Congrats, I guess, if I have to. Suck it, nerds. Not a sweep, so you have a chance next week. 
Yay. Cam hasn't seen this movie. All the other losers have. That's true. So we'll give you the Cam will give you the fresh rating. We'll give you nostalgia and then an update. So what nostalgia from the from the yonder year of two thousand two. From the yonder year of twenty twenty when Dylan saw this movie the first (laughs) time. (laughs) I have much nostalgia. So wow. I liked it a lot. It was a good story. I wouldn't take a lot of it. I would take or I mean I would take a lot of it with a grain of salt because the con man told you his own story, which is pretty much the definition of an unreliable narrator. Uh, however, as told, the story was interesting and entertaining. Lots of A-list actors in the movie, even for minor roles. Um, I thought it was entertaining throughout. I give it an 8 out of 10. Big 8 coming in hot. Oh, yeah. I thought it was good. I, I liked it. Like I said, uh, I sat down to watch it like late at night, and I was like, I'll just watch half of it and then go to bed. Um, and then, you know, I'll watch and I'll, I'll watch the second half later. I just stayed up late watching the whole dang thing. So going in, I gave this a seven and coming out, I'm going to drop it down to a six. Wow. Boo. It's, it's good. I think, I think the first viewing is a lot better in my opinion. Um, I think it's solid enough. Cinematography is really good. I actually really enjoyed the score. Ben seems to have not enjoyed it as much or been a little disappointed in John Williams. I'm just saying it wasn't, I saw John Williams and I was expecting like something that I would walk away. I was expecting something like, like it would still be stuck in my head. I think every, all the actors do um pretty good job. I just think that, the the story the the first time i felt kind of like cam where it was like oh i'm kind of enthralled and i gotta finish it but then after watching it uh the second time i'm kind of like okay i know what to expect i mean you know what happens at the at the beginning so it's like just getting to that point in the the journey because you already know the destination and yeah it's it's fine is it spielberg's best in my opinion no catch me if you can meh but watch it, you know, it's it's all right. Go view it. <laughs> Don't let me tell you what I, what to think. Uh, I'm going to do something that rarely happens on the pod. I'm going to rate this higher than everybody. Uh, I'm going to give, give this a movie a nine, a 9 out of 10. Oh. <gasps> um, I really like this movie. Ben uh, hasn't gone, though, so Ben could give it a 10. That's be, true. That's true. That's a well. Um, I think the movie's great. I'll tell you why it's not a 10, though. Uh, one, uh, Tom Hanks' horrible Boston accent is might be the worst part of the movie. And two, in the last 20 minutes, it drags quite a bit. I don't know what to do to make it better, though. Like, are the scenes needed? I mean, yeah, it's kind of the... It's kind of like Frank's redemption arc. But sort of, it just still feels long. It just still feels so long. The scene where the dude is walking through the cubicle and it's just his feet. And you're like, oh, Frank's coming back. And it's like another minute and a half until Frank actually shows up. It's like, come on, you didn't need that. Just give me the corny ending. It would have been better. Nine out of ten. All right, so going into this movie, I had it at an 8 out of 10. Um, I'm a sucker for the the 50s and 60s era, so period pieces like this just automatically grab my attention. But I do really enjoy the story in that, and I think it's kind of an interesting... Like Cameron said, you kind of take it with a grain of salt because it is being told through the point of the the, the con man. But I think that kind of adds to the narrative of it, where, like, you know... It's kind of a subtle thing of like, keep in mind, like, is did this really happen or is this bullshit? Or is this this guy trying to con me? Leaving the movie, I I bumped it up to an eight and a half, uh, not fully a nine. Like I said, it is a, a touch long. I think some of the scenes could probably be trimmed down or, or taken out. Rewatching this, I think the biggest thing that grabbed me was how many, like, people who you would watch the movie now and be like, oh my god, that's so and so. But when you saw it in 2002, it meant really like, next to nothing like elizabeth banks or um amy adams amy adams uh martin sheen he had done ellen for 2000 ellen like ellen pompeo (laughs) like yeah they like done a little bit but nothing super big that now you watch it and you're like oh holy holy shit they had like really uh, a home run hitting cast here they just didn't really know it yet 
Yeah, it's not that I was disappointed with the score. I was just, one, trying to spark the conversation that John Williams did the music. And two, I was, you know, you see John Williams, you expect something that, like, two days later, you're still humming in your head, and you're like, this is super catchy, and this is, like, an anthem. But the music was good. I love kind of the spy-ish kind of feel the movie has at times. Like, I know Frank goes and sees kind of James Bond, but at the same time, you know... He, I, and I feel like it definitely comes through, you know, him telling the story that in his mind, he was kind of a spy. He just wasn't a spy for the government. He was a spy who was just kind of in it for himself. You know, he forged checks. He made up identities. He did all the things that you'd expect kind of a spy to do to keep one step ahead. But he just was doing it for selfish reasons. Um, if you think about it, a spy is just a con man for the government. Yeah. You know? Oh, 100%. True. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed this movie. Check it out. Give it a watch. Um, could remove the Jennifer Garner scene. I love the cinematography in that initial meeting where it's just, it's just the entire story told through their feet, approaching the door, like slightly turning. And then his feet walk up and you're like, oh, like here comes like a love interest just purely based off of the editing and the shots of just feet which is i think one of the beauties of film in yeah, general Dylan loves feet i Big do feet love guy. feet um <laughs> no feet. just there's the whole um uh, i forget what it is i don't think it's it might be eisenstein but um basically there's like the whole theory that like einstein uh, no eisenstein um okay of like where you can edit the same image of someone next to another image and it conveys a completely different message between what you are showing. So like you have somebody who's sitting straight faced and if you put a picture of a casket, you'll think they're sad. If you put a picture of food, you'll think they're hungry. If you put a picture of something else, you'll think they're happy. And so like, even though they're, their expression never changes the yeah, world around the them thing. makes you interpret their their feelings differently and I, and i think that's something beautiful that that like that film does that nothing else really does and that like that scene just it does with showing you people's feet that is, is like something so, so unimportant something so just like stupid in a sense like it's just people's shoes but like it tells that entire story for you in two shots you know that's I don't know. I love that. And if you loved this episode, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram at Cocktails and Classics Pod. Check the show notes below. Get the caskers and drizzly links. Get some alcohol del delivered to your door. Buy some Surfside Sips. Uh, check out Catch Me If You Can on Netflix. And uh, catch us, if you can, next week. Who is it 007 Skyfall? James Bond? I, I don't know how you... I don't know how you preface, preface that it's a James Bond movie, but we're going to watch Skyfall. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> the James Bond movie. Tune in. And uh, as always, watch responsibly.